Well, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some super resolution images. Now, um, your camera um, may well be able to produce an array of very beautiful prints, but occasionally um, it might be the case that you want to produce a very, very large uh, print and you might not have enough resolution on your camera to do that successfully. Well, with this technique, you can shoot uh, lots of different images and stitch them together, very much like uh, stitching panoramics, very same very similar technique to that, and, and very similar camera settings. And we can produce, um, I've, well, I've seen um, qu figures quote on uh, here and there of producing 50 megapixels to 100 megapixel files from uh, doing using this technique. And I'm sure that is possible. We won't be going quite as large as that today, but uh, what we're gonna do is shoot this location here. It's uh, a bridge and there's lots of little details in this location which is why I've chosen it and we can do a, a standard picture and we'll do this multi-shot technique as well and we can compare the difference back in the studio of the resolution so you can see uh, the kind of effects are, are, uh, are available to us um, I'm gonna be using the camera on a tripod you don't have to use a tripod but uh, certainly I wouldn't do it with that one particularly um, I'm gonna use a cable release and I've got a little spirit level to just help me level the camera up. Also, you know, not necessary to have that, but it does help. And um, we're going to be using the camera on manual. But I'll go through the settings a bit later with you, it'll be a bit easier. But generally, we're going to be shooting uh, in a vertical format and taking lots of little pictures by rotating the camera like so and making sure we overlap them by about 15 or 20 percent and that will help us stitch them later in the software and um and that's basically about it so uh, i'll give you a quick tour around the location and then we'll get to get shooting and uh, we'll go back in the studio and uh, start to put them together Well, welcome back. I'm now in Adobe Bridge and I uh, have Photoshop CS3 uh, open. Um, here's our images that we shot uh, on the day. Um, our four images ready for stitching uh, for our super resolution image. And we've got a single frame down here, which we're going to use as a comparison. Now, uh, I mentioned the location. We've only shot four here. You can shoot a lot more images than this and I'll show you some examples as a couple of others I've tried um, but uh, I have seen examples uh, where people have gone out and sh shot uh, something like 50 odd uh, frames and stitched those together which uh, sounds insane and a lot of work but the, the results were, were quite spectacular um, now uh, the kind of resolutions that people are talking about fr from stitching these images are, are in the realms of 50 to 80 odd megapixels now that's comparable to uh, medium format digital backs which cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds uh, to, to buy um, but I don't want to say that you know if you go out and shoot you know 12 or 15 images and stitch them together you're going to get the same quality as a medium format back because obviously there's too many variables there's obviously uh, some of these cameras have got better lenses they may have better uh, software and um, also the, the characteristics of a digital back is that it, it captures a, a wider dynamic range which okay you could compete on by shooting HDR and extending the dynamic range that way but they also produce a much smoother tonal range and, and the quality is uh, quite a bit different I mean that may change in the near future with some of the DSLRs now uh, but at the moment there is quite a distinct difference so I don't think you can do a side by side and say you know it's going to match uh, the, the sort of quality from a digital bat but resolution wise it's definitely can be approached and you can get some outstanding results which are hopefully we can see a little bit of that off today with just our four images so what we're going to do uh, we're going to go show you the camera settings next uh, so you've got those to look through and then we're going to go ahead and stitch these together Okay, so let's just go through some of the camera settings. Um, these are very similar to panoramic stitching, um, uh, to be honest, um, but uh, it's worth repeating them. I know uh, I have done stuff on panoramic stitching before, but uh, I'll repeat myself anyway. Okay, so um, 
a bias use a tripod um you can shoot uh these sort of things handheld i've never done it i just think it's just uh, a bit too sloppy but if you were pushed and didn't have a tripod you could uh, give it a go and uh and, and do it that way and uh, i have heard of people uh, doing it and it working quite well um spirit level again not necessary i use one just just helps keep everything nice and uh, straight and it just helps the software uh stitch everything together cable release again you know not n absolutely necessary but uh, again um it's worth uh, worth using especially with the mirror locked up and that just avoids any problems with vibrations okay um so exposure wise use manual exposure um you you cannot change the aperture uh once you've uh, looked at your scene and judged the exposure pick an aperture and stick on that and also focus manually uh pick your point of focus and leave it at that do not touch it do not touch that or do not touch the aperture either um if you need to change the exposures use the shutter speed um and, and i advise if you've got the sun in um in uh, in one shot then you know just go just do a bit of a test run through the through the image and work out uh, i mean I, I can normally judge by looking at a scene if i need to give something an extra stop or two stops um, but uh, you might not be able to do that uh, to straight away. Um, that comes with experience, like I said. Uh, so you may want to just do a little bit of a test run through. Um, next, we have a focal length um, uh, 35 to 70. I recommend you can go use wide angles, but you do get a lot more distortion towards the edges, and that can cause uh, sometimes cause problems with the stitching uh, software. Uh, but um, you know give it a go it's not uh, again not set in stone uh, that's just my uh, my way of working i prefer to sort of uh, go slightly longer if i can um okay and so as you're shooting and move, as you're moving uh, onto each frame you need to overlap them by 15 20 percent again that's to help give the stitching software something to uh, something to use and calculate the stitching uh with uh if you if you just uh, if you don't allow enough it makes life harder for the stitching software uh okay so again be aware of the lighting within the scene so uh one thing i would say if you if you're shooting say at dusk and the sun's going down so maybe on the right hand side of the frame the sun's setting and then uh, um you may want to maybe start that side shoot that side first uh cuz obviously the light's changing all the time so it's best to get that shot first and then move away from the light source and shoot the other bits so that's what i would do uh be aware of lighting within the scene well that's just i've just covered that uh, and obviously again uh, average your exposures out or or simplest of this time bridge them because you may want to do a hdr as well that's something else you might want to do or exposure blending uh, as i prefer to use uh, just to blend the bright skies in so it's always you know if you've got time uh, and it's always best just to bridge your exposures anyway because uh, at a later date you may change your mind about something and at least you've got them then and if you don't want them you can always delete them well, hopefully uh, all those settings are pretty straightforward. Um, there's not really that much to worry about there. Just uh, just a few guidelines, uh, a common sense more than anything else. So here we go. So let's um, let's now go back to our images. We're going to stitch these together. Um, so we're going to select them all again. I'm even using Photoshop CS3. Uh, we will go to Tools, Photoshop, and then Photo Merge. And that will now load up these images. I'm actually, these are actually raw files that I've just adjusted. And I actually, before we do that, I'm just going to explain something. Um, it's advisable these these images are very going to vary slightly, even if your exposures are pretty good. What I would normally do, I always shoot camera raw. I tend to go in uh, camera raw, and if and it needs tweaking a little bit. So let's say uh, this this bridge here is uh, quite a bit darker than the first image i'll try and even the exposures out so again i'm just helping helping the stitching software to uh, along its way and helping it to blend the images and if there's a big difference it's not going to blend very well so just try and you know maybe go in and just even out the exposures a bit and obviously make sure the color balance matches as well so uh, just a little tip there so these are camera raw i'm going to go to uh, tools photoshop and then photo merge and that will then load up the photo merge box. 
I leave the layout settings on auto. Um, I've not found any reason to uh, come off that one so far, so that works for me. So I'd advise leaving that on there, um, and I'll tick the box blend images together. And all we do now is just click. We've got our images in there. We we'll just click OK, and then Photoshop will go away and run its stuff. Right now, photo merge is now uh, finally output our uh, our stitched image. Uh, I should point out, um, I'm shooting this on a 16.7 megapixel uh, camera, and I've only shot four frames, as you know, and already we're up to 700 megabytes. Now that is 16 bit. Uh, I'm working in 16 bit mode, so uh, that's partly the reason why uh, it's such a large file. But however, you know, just bear that in mind. You need uh, to have plenty of RAM on your computer uh, and processing power if you're going to start stitching lots of images together. Anyway, uh, first thing I normally do is to turn off some of these layers and just check the joins to make sure that Photoshop hasn't uh, missed anything. And very rarely do I have a problem, but it's still uh, always worth going through the image and just checking. So I've already checked this once, so I'm not going to go through it again, but uh, worth doing that before you go any further. I'm going to highlight these, add a new layer from the bottom of the layers palette, hold down the Alt or the Option key and go to Merge Visible and that will create a stamp combining all these layers into a single layer. We can actually get rid of this now, like so. I'm going to duplicate that, Command or Control, Command or Control J and before we crop this image down we're going to um, basically go into the distortion filter, lens distortion, and just correct any uh, distortion that you may uh, pick up uh, with this. So let's rename this one uh, distortion. Like so, go to filter, distort, and then lens correction. And that'll bring up the lens correction uh, dialog, dialog box. Um, I'm going to move this, got quite a fine grid on here, I'm going to move this down a little bit because I find it a bit too much, like so. And what we're going to do is just c correct a little bit of a vertical perspective uh, distortion. We've got a little bit of distortion there, so I'm just going to pull this across a little bit, like so. And you can see what I mean now, the edges uh, obviously come in here, um, so it makes sense to leave as much space around the image, so uh, not, to, not to crop it until you've uh, done any uh, possible uh, lens corrections. Click OK, and that will process that correction and add it to our layers uh, palette. Right, so lens correction has finished doing its job. I also get that name uh, confused. Uh, yeah, so lens correction has uh, sorted that out for us. Uh, here's before, here's after. Only a slight adjustment, but just uh, just sort out this that slight bit of distortion there on the bridge. Uh, we can now crop this down. So we'll get the uh, the crop tool, and then just let's just turn the bottom one off. That might help a little bit. And we're just going to crop this down, get rid of these edges. You could Photoshop these and clone these uh, in if you wanted to, these gaps, but uh, I'm not going to bother on this one. Crop that down. And we'll come back to that in a second, I think. Okay, so here's our finished uh, finished cropped image. I'm now going to delete uh, this bottom layer. We don't need that. And the next thing we'll do is compare this stitch version with this single frame we took uh, on location. Okay, so on the left here we have our uh, stitched panoramic uh, super resolution image, and on the right we have a single frame uh, raw file uh, that I shot on the same focal length. They're both zoomed at 100%. Uh, this one uh, obviously is slightly larger in frame because we've obviously got more pixels in the picture. Um, and uh, you should hopefully on the video be able to pick this up, but this sign is, you can see from the writing, is that, that much uh, clearer than this one. There's not a huge huge gaping difference because we only shot four images just to give you a, a comparison but uh, even from that you can see there's a, a bit of a bit of a difference in resolution uh, and that bit clearer image um, 
next I'm going to show you a couple more samples of some other images I shot uh, which are slightly different uh, and that will again hopefully give you a few ideas of how you can incorporate this uh, into your own uh, photography okay so here's an, another image I shot I did this one in a landscape format rather than the upright um, I did one exposure here then did these this actually a, um, is a uh, a exposure blend uh, of uh, various uh, bracketed exposures and I'll show you the uh, not quite finished image yet uh, in a second but I just want to show you these frames first so this is my first exposure for the uh, this pillbox, the center field, and uh, obviously the sky. Then I then I pan the camera across to incorporate again a bit of overlap. Uh, and incorporate this tree and uh, these lovely lines in the field. I then tilted the camera downwards to get a little bit more foreground, as you see in this one. Then panned it back across to get the foreground uh, underneath this one here for this bit. Uh, and that what it gave us then was an image which resembles this. Okay, not quite finished yet, but you can see from from uh, this example, you don't have to go upright images all the way across. You can use it panoramic. You know, it's up to you what you want to do with it. Um, so then uh, we can probably I'll end up probably cropping this down a slightly little bit. But that's just another way uh, of capturing these uh, super resolution images. You don't have to go upright. You can go in a landscape format if you wish. It just depends on the uh, the uh, the image you're shooting really. Okay, my final example is this one, another vertical stitch with three frames. Uh, I actually shot another exposure blend on this one um, because we've got the sun setting here. So I actually shot probably, um, I think, two stops under, two stops over, and I combined them all together on this image. And uh, this is the final image uh, I finished a little while ago. So there we have it, super resolution stitching. I uh, hope you found this tutorial uh, of use, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.